If you're wondering why I'm walking my bike, it's because I don't have the necessary tools to replace the fork myself. But that's not what this video is about. I finally received the brand new fork I had ordered for my bike. It's the RockShox Pike Ultimate Charger 2.1 RC2 suspension fork with 140mm of travel. And if you're wondering why I chose this one, let me explain. If you go to a website like Worldwide Cyclery and input the wheel size, offset, and a 130 to 150 range of travel necessary, your only options are the RockShox Pike. Yeah, how about that? And if I'm being honest, the last time I took this bike out, I played a small game in the parking lot titled, Where's That Noise Coming From? After the ride was done. Turns out, I hadn't properly tightened the crank set due to some confusing instructions and the cable themselves, coming from the left hand side of the bars, had crossed at some point without me noticing. On both manners, I pretty much blame myself. Moving back to the fork, I will admit, it's more than I initially wanted to spend on a fork. It's quite possibly the most expensive thing I've ever purchased for a mountain bike. Aside from the increased travel, the offset is the same as the original bike's fork, so I didn't change a whole lot of geometry on the bike at all. The fork itself is somewhat lighter than the previous fork, which is due largely to lighter components being used for its construction. The fork is also noticeably beefier than its predecessor at 32mm stanchions to a whopping 35mm. If you are interested, the box shipped with a mud guard and two volume spacers for additional setup options. I may use them down the road as I grow more confident with the suspension. Unlike the previous fork, the new fork includes both high speed compression settings and low speed compression settings that can be set independently of each other. For me, this is going to require some time to get used to because I need to figure out which works best for me. And once I do, I'll probably leave it there and never adjust it again to be honest, unless someone borrows my bike. Kind of like when you let someone borrow your car and you change your seat settings and you struggle to find exactly where you no left it in the first place. What I'm doing right now. For me, the addition of the new fork marks one of the last upgrades I'll do to this hardtail. Although most people say you change your brakes as one of your first upgrades, I've never had an issue with the Shimano MT200 brakes, and I'm going to likely wait further down the road before I change them. Finally, I actually want to touch on some of the components that got replaced on this bike. Initially, I thought about selling them or donating them to somebody else, as I did with my previous bike builds. But I thought about it, and I considered some of the components aren't all that bad. So, in addition to some of the components I took off, I purchased some additional components and decided to use them in building a loaner bike for some friends who've been asking me if they can try out the sport. Although I don't know which bike I'll, it'll be at the moment, I know it'll be something entry level we can build up in a future video. In that case, I'll invite anyone to consider nominating an entry level bike they think can work for a new rider. Until then, I'd like to thank everybody for watching, have a great day, and have a better tomorrow. Well, probably gonna be a week or two before this fog clears up and I can go to the back of the mountains. Oh. We stuck to the end. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. See you guys next time when I actually can ride this in the mountains. <laughs>